Hello and welcome to my untidy workspace today. Um, we're going to look at taking apart a typical anamorphic scope. So here is examples. We've got a Sanko, which is the one I've not opened before and I'm going to attempt to do live. It always just invites trouble if you're doing it on camera, unfortunately. Uh, this is a, a, a Niki, which is, again, it's, it's, it's a similar design. Uh, a Kawa would be the... Uh, similar design to these two as well. So this is just very, very common scope design. What you need as a minimum to open these is a small flathead screwdriver, you know, like a, a jewellery screwdriver. Uh, make sure it fits the head uh, well. Um, if you've got a screwdriver that's really not well fitting, you're just going to make your job hard. You're not going to be able to get the screw out neat and you could end up uh, damaging the threads on that and making it even more difficult to take out. You should then have a just a normal flathead screwdriver with a, a head that isn't too big um, and that's going to be for taking the tabs apart inside the scope. You've got the optional uh, lens tool. I'm going to show you why, you, why I use that. Um, and so I'll be covering some of the mods that you can do and that's, that's the reason for this. Uh, one of the issues you tend to get with these scopes, which bothers some people, it doesn't bother others, so it's, that's why I say it's optional is you have a ring round the front element. In fact, there's the one around the back as well, so that these, they're actually secured in with glue anyway, uh, but these rings then get um, tightened in afterwards. Um, and the material on these, although the, the black in color, it can sometimes be reflective so that you're actually getting light bounce about. Now I've already treated these, they're actually in matte black, so you're not getting any reflection off this outer ring. But the way most people go about trying to deal with this when they do have the problem, is to get the uh, marker pen and then they start marking around this. But the problem with that is A, you're going to get some on the glass more than likely you're going to have to clean it off, which isn't a big deal, but it, it, it's it's a bit of a pain. Um, but it's also the fact that because the glass actually curves and comes out um, higher on a, either edge, um, you're never ever getting uh, all the ring uh, coloured anyway. Um, so some of it's going to be hidden behind the glass. So you're only going to lessen the reflection we're not going to deal with it all so I'm sort of going to show you how I go about this so you get a lens tool and you place that on the markers on this it's got like little slots already there made specifically for these tools put it in make sure the tool itself is screwed together solidly try and use a flat surface like I'm using here and then twist. Now with some lenses it might just not want to go, it might be really tough to do so I say give this a go, if it comes loose great but um, yeah if you think you're going to damage your lens then, then you know you're worried about scratching and then just stop. I mean I've got one of these where I, I won't even try it because I've, you know, I've given it a go and it's it's taking so much force that I just don't give it any more. Usually these come across fairly easily so yeah all you need to do is a little twist and that will usually come free which will happen there and then just use your finger and uh, spin it out. So that's a much safer way of doing it because once you use your fingers, obviously, you can't risk scratching the glass. So one thing to know is once this comes out, is there's normally a, a ring inside here. There we go. So just make sure you uh, secure that. So once you've got it out, I mean this as I said I've done this already but just to give you an idea what I would do is I would normally go through and uh, do, do a coat this way around. I would let that dry and then I would just do a second coat. I'll just do it top to bottom like that and that usually gives me a good coverage. Let that dry but let's get back to what I was mainly wanting to focus on which is taking it apart. So as I say, jewelry screwdriver, line it up. And let's fingers crossed that this doesn't end up being a struggle. Like it's going to be, by the looks. No, that's working, that's all right. These are really small screws, so make sure you've got enough um, space on your workspace. You don't want that uh, rolling away because it'd be really tough to find if that rolls down onto the floor, onto the carpet or something. Unnecessarily small and fiddly these are. Well, this one's been problematic. Um, it's going to get magnifying glasses. Good tools have optional. For 
some reason this screws on in a lot deeper than the other two. I was even wondering if there isn't one. Oh no, wait. <laughs> it was missing there. So that's me thinking there's a screw there and there isn't. It's a little odd that someone's... Yeah, strange. Maybe someone's going to go at this in pass and then just given up. So anyway, that's the that's the front off. Um, that actually secures the, uh, the back focus ring. So you can just literally unscrew that off now. There we go, it's, got, it's covered in a fair bit of grease around the thread, so just be aware of that. And you'll find that obviously here. So the way it actually works is, oh, in fact, oh, that's really gunky. Um, I'll clean it up after because it wasn't moving that smoothly, so I think it's quite a bit of gunk there. Um, so as you move this backwards and forwards on the focus ring, what it's actually doing is it's moving the front element. And when it's out towards its full extent, that's where uh, your infinity is thereabouts. So this actually is the same as the E key in that it has two tabs. Uh, some of the cowers have three. So what you often have is you have one here, say left hand side, one by the focus line, and one on the right hand side. Well, they've done here. It's quite useful. So I don't know if someone's done this themselves. You know, again, it's wondering how somebody opened it or did they do it as normal, but there is actually a red mark there, which is quite helpful for lining that up. Because what I normally do is, before taking it apart, I look where the focus line is and I put a little scratch in just so I know how to line it up after. So just a, just a little mark so I know visual. So really, that's just a little bit too tiny. To see, there we go. Do you see that? It's made a little. Hopefully, you should be able to see a little line. So, yeah, I wouldn't stress too much about this. People get really panicky about these. Um, and it's usually fairly straightforward. So, this one screw out. So this is really gunked up. Again with a ton of grease. And that's the final one. So what you can do now is just get your screwdriver under these and pop these tabs out. They're not fastened to it, they're just sitting in it loose, so they will come out. And there we go, so you can see exactly how it's made now. So you have a front element there, a rear, a rear element here. And all that happens is these are lined up. So if we take that again to there. So when you're sliding it in, all you're doing is making sure that the front and uh, rear element are aligned. With an anamorphic lens, if they're not aligned, um, it will be soft, um, it, you won't have a good look from it. So this is one of the mods people often have to do, is open up the lens and you know, tweak this a little bit left or right and fasten it in place to get it entirely sharp. Um, it, it, I think it does vary to a degree on the, on the brand in the, uh, I, I feel that where you've got them, where they've got the three tabs, that there's more potential for movement, but may, maybe, that, maybe that's wrong. Um, but I, I didn't have to open this to align it. It was it was sharp already, so it's just really for the sake of doing this tutorial. But you, you can open them up and go for this process. I've heard it argued that really the way it should be done is removing this rear piece of glass, but you can't because it's glued in. So it's an absolute rigmarole to try and adjust um, the alignment by playing about with the the rear glass. Um, 
So even if people bark it on the internet of saying, well, you, you shouldn't really do it for this line in the front, it's it's the most practical way of doing it. So that's that's the way I do it. Talking about the inside of the lens, as we mentioned before, uh, with reflections, you, you can actually see here, hopefully, as I move it up and down, yeah, there you can see, a light will actually bounce off the inside here. So even if you've done the uh, Sharpie trick, as it's called on the front, you still might be getting uh, internal reflections because of that so really you'd want to sharpie the inside of this as well or you can use um, telescope flocking material which is like a, an adhesive velvet that you stick on uh, around it and that's that'll do a very good job as well and you've also got the, the same issue in, in the main barrel right on at the end it is if we can see it's really quite reflective um, so you might want to actually darken that as well. Um, some of this reflection gives the lens some of its uh, character and the way it flares. So you might just want to deal with it where it's a problem and otherwise leave it be. So it's really much, very much your call for the look that you want with your anamorphic. Um, I've actually, on one of my lenses, I've actually put a bit of colour inside here to influence the light bouncing about. So that's maybe one thing you could even think about if you want to do something especially if you've got an anamorphic lens that's cheaper, a bit more bashed up, um, you might just want to have a bit of a, a play about with it and try and make it a bit more funky and weird. Um, but again, entirely your choice. Um, one note here, I'll show you when I put this back in the right way. There we go. There is a, a hole often in these. Um, I think it's somewhere around, around about an M2. You can actually get a grub screw um, into these usually and use that to fasten the lens in place. So when you've actually got it set up at infinity, which was somewhere around about there, um, you can actually put a grub screw in a hold it. Uh, gives it more hold than uh, just putting tape on it because obviously we tape, um, especially if you're screwing things on and off the front here that can uh, work out of place over time potentially. Anyway, well, I'm gonna go through putting it back together again because it, it really isn't as much drama as people think it is. What I would suggest though is if, if I were doing this, not just for this tutorial, I would check it on a camera as well before I finally fastened it together for the alignment just to make sure it was looking sharp. will be a little bit fiddly so this is a bit that I'll lightly speed up in post so it'll be a bit easier if I plant the lens down but I'm just a bit wary of how much grease is on this thing make sure you get the screws straight before you start screwing them if it's a slightly bit off to an angle then then don't force it in leave it slightly loose before you put in the second screw just in case that's not entirely lined up Well, that's it, those two straight in with no hassle. There, there we go. So all you do now is get your focus wheel and we'll just we'll start turning that. Yep, that's on. There's, there's no scratch in there against the screws. And then So that's it back together. What you would normally do then is you would get your tiny, 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 horrible screws and you would get these in on. This is going to be really fiddly and this is why it's good to have a magnifying glass to make sure you have got them in right because it's when you're just looking at this it's even hard to tell which way up it is. I, mean, that's, I can see actually that's the right way up. But again you've just got to get these things straight but then screw them in. I mean, to be fair, you don't need, I mean, obviously we've seen already this was secured with two screws, so it doesn't have to be secured with three. Um, so that's what you do, put your screws back in. That is a far from fortunately, but once those are back in, um, you're good to go. You can see with this one, it's a little bit stiff still, so that's going to need, I'm going to re, I think, clean that grease off that was there and put some new on. Yeah. But there you go. That's 
the basic principle of taking one of these part and putting it back together again it's really it's not that difficult and it's not something you should fear but don't do it for the sake of it but if you do need to um, adjust the alignment or you're dealing with light reflection inside then it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something that you can do yourself. I hope you found that useful. Um, please subscribe if you want to have a look at any more anamorphic stuff. I won't be doing tutorials that often, but I will do stuff now and then. I'm quite keen on uh, anamorphics and uh, getting practical use for them. Right, thank you very much. Catch you later.